A customer sent us their main board for a Sony model number XBR-85X850G. The issue they're experiencing is problem with the picture displaying properly on screen. Now, when we tested this unit, we actually found it to be fully functional, but we did notice something on the LVDS ribbon cables right over here. The LVDS connectors are right over here to the left of the top heatsink. Now, if we take a closer look at these connectors under our microscope, we'll notice that we have a little latch over here on this side but it is broken off and missing on this side. Let's look at the other connector. Down here we have one, and again, missing on the left. Now it is very important to have both of those latches, otherwise when you plug in your LVDS ribbon, you will not be able to remove it without breaking the ribbon. Now here's an example of a damaged ribbon. As you can tell, on the right side over here, we have a little tooth, and on the left side, the tooth was ripped off. The teeth are very important because they allow the ribbon to be guided properly in the connector. On the back side of the ribbon, you'll notice there's a lot of traces that are very close to each other. So if the ribbon is slightly shifted to the right or to the left, it will cause the traces to bridge over to the connection points. So that's why it's imperative to have ribbons in perfect condition as well as connectors in perfect condition. To help the customer get their board working again, we are going to remove the entire connectors and replace them with new connectors. For this process, because the heatsink is so close to those connectors, we're gonna go ahead and remove the heatsink first. For the removal process of the connectors, we're gonna both use a bottom heater and top hot air at the same time. So I'm gonna place my board right here. Use our fume extractor. And I don't think this is necessary per se, but I typically like to add a little bit of solder to some of our contact points, especially the grounds. The reason for is that it helps me get a good visual indicator on whether or not my solder is molten and whether or not the connector is ready to pull off the board. And just a reminder, this is the original customer's board. So we are gonna be throwing out these connectors once we're done, which means I don't need to worry about melting the plastic. And I'm adding some flux on all sides to make sure we get good flow with our solder. All right, our board has been preheating for some time. I think we're set to start the removal process. I'm gonna start applying some heat with my hot air. And I'm gonna be looking right here on my solder, making sure we have a good visual indicator of flow. And it looks like right here we do have good flow. And I'm gonna give it a little nudge. Oh, we're almost there. Okay, we'll go on to the next one right away. Okay, solder's starting to flow. We're not quite there yet. All right, there we are. All right, while the board is still somewhat hot, we're gonna go ahead and start desoldering with our desolder wick. All right, and now we have a clean slate. We're gonna do a quick little cleanup with some isopurple alcohol and a Q-tip. Remove all of that flux. Okay. Looks like maybe two Q-tips. We can go ahead and toss out these broken connectors now. We'll remove our customer's board, and this is gonna be our donor board. So I actually don't have these connectors available. There's nowhere that you can necessarily just buy them outright. So we're gonna have to scavenge them off of a other board that we were not able to fix. This board is actually a little bit different. This one is the 850F, which is one year older than the 850G, but the connectors are the same. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these. So same thing, I'm gonna remove that heat sink to make it a little bit easier for us to remove those connectors. All right, the same thing's gonna happen. We're gonna start by also adding a little bit of solder to some of our ground pads and to our pins.
Okay, we're gonna be actually switching to our microscope for the removal on this one. And one of the things I did not do on the prior board for the removal is add solder on this side. We have several pins over here. We're going to add our flux. All right, and we're going to start using our hot air. Now on this one, we want to be extra careful. We do not want to melt the plastic. So we're going to have to try and be quick. My solder is molten. There we are. Ooh, I think we did a pretty good job. My plastic's not molten. All right, let's shift over to our other one. Whoa, I started melting that plastic a little bit. I don't know if you saw that on the right side. And there we are. I did melt a little plastic there, but it's minimal, so I think we should be okay. Taking a look at the connector after it's been removed. We do have what looks like maybe a little plastic. No, that's flux, so we'll need to clean that off. Um, for the most part, this one looks good. I don't see any problems. Solder-wise, we have a little bit of a bridge here, here, and here, but I don't think we need to worry about that. We'll just clean that up when we install it. Um, the clips look good. One thing we can do here is use our ribbon. We're gonna go ahead and test it. Yeah, it looks like I got a lot of goop on this, so that means there's just a ton of flux inside of that connector. So we'll need to clean all that off. And we're not gonna be able to get all of it with this Q-tip. I'm just trying to get the bulk of it on the outside. What we'll do is we'll throw it in an alcohol bath. Our connectors are now clean from our isopropyl alcohol bath. And we're just gonna go ahead and do a quick test. Okay, my ribbon clicks in and comes out. Let's check our larger ribbon now. Okay, and we have a good click. Go ahead and remove it. And is it dirty it is not we don't have any more flux so for our installation I'm gonna start by adding some solder to our ground pads we're gonna slide our connector in until we're lined up I think that looks good so what we can do here is lock it in you want to be careful. Now, as you recall, there is a little bit of solder on the bottom of this connector, which means it's not entirely flush to the board. And it might, because of that, make it a little bit harder for me to solder some of these pins down, which means I may have to use hot air from the bottom now I'm gonna try and solder as much of it down as I can, just with my iron first, and then we'll attack it with the iron next if I still need some additional help. And it looks like this one I'm having a little bit of a hard time, so let's add a little flux and do the same to that one. That's better. Same process with this one. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Having a little bit of a hard time getting 
my transfer of heat into the PCB itself. There we go, that's better. For this one, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and preemptively add a little bit of flux to all those contact points. And something else we're gonna do is switch our tips. I'm gonna use a smaller one just to be a little more precise. Now we're gonna attack our pins on the front side. Ah, I just bent some pins, okay. That was not a good move. We're gonna need to fix that ASAP. Putting my tweezer in there. Pushing it over, locking it in. Now we should be good. All right, so I'm having an issue with soldering down some of these, and part of the reason is because I don't believe the pins are actually flush and making contact, physical contact, with the pads below them. So what it means is at this point, I can't keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna need to use my hot air so I can melt the entirety of the connector so then it settles down and makes contact with all the pins. I have moved the board to the edge of the table and what I'm gonna do is with my hot air, I'm gonna heat up the board from the bottom because I don't want to melt any of the plastic on the connector. And I'm starting to see a little bit of the solder melting. Okay, I think it did just flow actually right now. I'm gonna hang out on it for just a few more seconds just to make sure we have really good flow. Okay, that should be good. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing to the next one. So this one I didn't add any flux, so I'm gonna do that now. All right, same thing, we're gonna go ahead and solder it from the bottom with our hot air. And I think some of our ground pads are still very hot from us just melting the connector next to it. Yep, I'm seeing the flow. We're gonna hang out for a little longer just to be sure. And that should be good. Let's let it cool off. All right, so we're gonna start soldering again with the iron. I'm gonna put a little bit more new flux and let's see if we have a better time soldering. That's a big blob. I think we can work our way through that though. There we go. I think we got all of them now. Just have that blob we gotta get rid of. Which I think we can. All right, maybe not. Might have to bring out the big guns. There we go. Okay, we got it. We're gonna wanna do a big cleanup here. We did use a good amount of flux. We're also gonna wanna make sure that we didn't get more flux inside the connector. Although this time around, I don't think we did. Go ahead and do a quick check. We're raking to make sure no pins are loose. And they look good. For the sake of this video not dragging on for too long, I'm going to finish the other connector off screen and then we'll reconvene for our final testing. I have installed my main board in my test jig. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in. This is gonna be our screen over here. I just heard it click. And let me switch. Okay, our Sony logo is showing up. Gonna center that a little bit. And the important part is for us to see that we have proper picture. So right now it's loading. We have our HDMI 1, the no signal, and we can clearly see the background 
and confirm. I can go ahead and clip and unclip my ribbons. So this does confirm we have a successful repair. If you have a Sony XBR 85X 850G that you'd like to send in for us to fix, we offer both the power supply and mainboard repair services. Those will be linked in the video description down below. Otherwise, if you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.